Hello fellow modeling enthusiasts, James Duffy here and it's time for another unboxing video. This time we'll be taking a look at the 124th scale kit of the German V2 A4 ballistic missile offered by Space Monkey Models. Space Monkey Models is my very own company and I started it a few years ago to create this kit and bring it to market for others to build and enjoy. I had a couple requests from folks who wanted to see a closer look at the kit and some of the parts inside and an unboxing video seems to be a great way to do that. Let's begin with a bit of background on the V2. Development of the rocket that became known as the V2 began just before the start of the Second World War with Werner von Braun leading the activities of a group of engineers, scientists, and technicians at a research center near the town of Pinemunda on Germany's Baltic coast. The rocket didn't enter operation until the final year of the war and thousands of V-2 missiles were used against the cities of London, Paris, and Antwerp. To learn more about the history of the V-2, I encourage you to take a look at the V-2 in America DVD that is conveniently included with this kit. Let's get started by slicing the box open. The first thing we'll take a look at is the airframe molding. This is the main structure of the kit and is a little bit different than most traditional scale modeling offerings in that it was created using blow molding rather than traditional injection molding technology. Essentially we've created this part using the same techniques that are used to create things like water bottles and other consumer packaging. I can't claim to be the first to use this approach in a plastic model kit. The Chinese firm Dragon released a couple of kits about 15 years ago that featured blow molded parts, a 196 scale Arion 5 and a couple different 148 scale Long March boosters. The detail on those kits was soft though and the parts suffered from some fit problems. Still the idea was sound so I used those kits as a benchmark of what I did not want in working with the mold designers to develop this kit. I'm really pleased with the level of detail that was achieved here with this blow molded component. It may be tough to see on the video here, but there's some extensive rivet detail up at the front here in the upper section. Uh, the plastic is high impact polystyrene just like any other kit. You'll be able to work the part just like the parts in a traditional plastic model kit from Tamiya, Revell, Hasegawa, or any of the other major manufacturers. The adhesives and paint that you already have now will work fine as you move through your build. Down here at the aft end of the airframe molding you can see some assorted hatch detail as well as some markings that are used to accurately position the forward end of the completed fin assemblies. The fuel tank section of the V2 was uh, the real V2 was assembled in two halves and the joint was covered up by a metal strip. That strip is accurately represented here on both sides of the airframe as are the assorted access hatches here at the forward end of the airframe near the instrumentation section. If you take a look you can see the witness line that shows up as a result of the molding process. We've hidden most of it in those uh, join strips on either side of the airframe. You'll be able to clean up this line very quickly with some sanding sticks during your build. These domes on the forward and aft ends of the airframe are a little unusual. These structures were added to the mold tool to allow the molten plastic to mold across the forward and aft ends of the part cleanly and uniformly, avoiding the sort of fit problems that show up on the Dragon Arion and Long March kits that we discussed earlier. Before assembly, you simply cut off the domes with a razor saw. It's real easy to do and it doesn't take more than a few minutes. Let's take a look at some of the injection molded components in the kit next. I've gone ahead and taken the sprue that contains the warhead and aft nozzle insert components out of its protective bag. This of course is the warhead, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's a fuse component on another sprue that fits into the top end of this. This aft nozzle insert slots into the aft 
section of the airframe and represents the outside section of the uh, rocket motor nozzle that can be seen from outside the rocket. It's also got these recesses to aid in positioning the completed fin assemblies. Speaking of the fins, let's take a look at a fin sprue. I've already popped this out of its protective plastic bag. The kit contains four identical fin sprues. There are two fin halves which have these little bits left over on the back from the ejector pins that pop the molded part out of the mold tool. These are real easy to cut off and a few strokes with a sanding stick will make sure that the fin halves go together cleanly during your build. There are also parts on this sprue that represent the turbine exhaust covers, that's right here, as well as the pull-out port covers, that's right here. Two of these will go on the aft end of the airframe and two of these will go on the aft end of the airframe. Uh, there are also some little tiny parts for the antenna halves that go onto the aft end of the assembled fins. Those are right here. Various V2 uh, rounds had anywhere from one to four antennas trailing off of those fins. Depending on what your resources dictate, you'll, you'll need to determine how many of those you need to add to your model. The last little bits on this sprue are the exhaust vane assembly. This fits into the root edge and extends into what would be the exhaust from the rocket nozzle. And here, finally, is the fuse tip that fits into the top of the warhead on the top of the rocket. Now you sand the tip to either a fine point for a tactical round or a more blunt point for a research round. That's it for the molded parts, although we should talk about one more bit of plastic in the box. Taped under the box top is a strip of half round plastic stock. Little sections of that are sliced off and glued into place into the simulated joint between the forward and aft airframe sections to represent the bolts used to join these two sections together. If your build experience is anything like mine, you'll lose a few of these little bits as you finish up your kit, so there's plenty of extra material supplied. Let's take a look at the decals supplied with the kit, which I've already taken out of the protective plastic bag. Using the decals supplied with this kit, you can build any of four variants of the V2. Two of these represent wartime missiles, and two more represent post-war V2 research rockets that were flown in America. The first tactical variant is the one shown on the V2 in splinter camouflage that's on display at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. Next is a single color tactical scheme that replicates the V2 on display in the central atrium at the Imperial War Museum in London. As for the post-war variants, the first is a single V2 that the U.S. Navy launched from the deck of the aircraft carrier USS Midway in September of 1947 as part of a program called Operation Sandy. While the flight of the rocket was kind of a bust, Sandy did demonstrate that a rocket could indeed be launched successfully from the deck of a ship at sea, and you'll get those markings with the kit. The final marking option is my personal favorite, a gate guard variant that appeared on a damaged V2 that the White Sands Proving Ground folks used for promotional purposes for several years following World War II. This rocket was also used in these markings during Operation Sandy for facilities verification, basically seeing if everything on board the USS Midway would fit the rocket that would later fly from the deck of the ship. Just as a bit of trivia, the airframe that carried this scheme is the same one that was restored in the past several years for display at the current White Sands Missile Range Museum. And it's on display there now in the yellow and black scheme that the earliest US flown V2s carried. Each of these marking variants is represented in the full color finishing guide that comes with each kit. On the flip side of the finishing guide are the illustrated assembly instructions. The kit also contains a marking guide that you cut out and wrap around the airframe tube to help guide the positioning of those half round styrene bits that simulate the airframe join bolts. And on this same sheet is also a, a template 
that'll help you refine the final shape of the fuse part into either a tactical or research version. There's also a section that'll help you locate the turbine shroud covers and the pull-out plug shroud covers. The final goodie that you'll find in the box is a copy of the Rocket.Aero DVD, the V2 in America. This DVD has almost four hours of archival footage on the V2 program and it puts a spotlight on the importance of the V2 as a research tool in the U.S. You can learn a whole lot more about this DVD by visiting the Space Monkey Models website. So that's the kit. What does the model look like when it's all done? Well, here's a model that I finished in the U.S. Air Force Museum tactical scheme. This was completed straight out of the box using Tamiya spray lacquers with a little bit of weathering at the airframe joint to draw out the detail of the fasteners. Just the tiniest bit of filler was used to refine the joint between the fin roots and the airframe. And I'm really pleased with how the kit turned out. So that's the 124th scale V2A4 kit from Space Monkey Models. Thanks for watching and I hope that you'll visit our website to learn more.